The ZX81 comes out at £70, which was amazing. It sold in much larger quantities than the ZX80 and was a bit more robust, a bit more nicely finished, and that was really the key machine which created the whole kind of bedroom coder. And I think the ZX81 was the key, key machine that actually sparked it all off. Do you want to sell sugar water? Or do you want to change the world? Do you want to sell sugar water? Or do you want to change the world? The Zenit Technique 1 was actually quite magical. For the first time, you had this case with, yes, it's rubbish keyboard that you just used to keep trying to push to make anything happen. Every time you pushed it, the ram pack would wobble and you'd crash and everything. Um, but being able to take that very simple bit of electronic kit um, and use it to create something on the TV. What, that was that was completely mind blowing. Because you actually, as a kid, that's all you had as an entertainment medium, pretty much growing up, was the, the TV and being able to control that box and do something yourself, create something that threw images up there. That that was really special, and that was I think what engaged me so much as well. That's you wanted to do something, you wanted to see what else it could do. And I think that's where all, the whole uh, nebulous of the British industry comes from, because it was, it's, it was about kids that were playing and wanting to change something and experiment and do something. And that, that led into everything else. Do you want to sell a chicken water or do you want to change the world? Do you want to sell a chicken water or do you want to change the world? Homemade games really started with the ZX81. Suddenly, people could write moving games on a cheap computer. The ZX81 came with the basic programming language, which um, is very rudimentary. There was no memory on it. There was 1K of memory, which, to put it into perspective, the icon, the Twitter icon on your mobile phone is probably about 8K. So that gives you an idea of how much memory was in there. Um, but, you know, I managed to get a few very simple things working, like, you know, getting the letter A to fly across the screen and things like that, which uh, for me was a great achievement. It, no one else understood what, what I was doing or why I was doing it, but it was a lot of fun. The Sinclair book that came with the ZX81 was excellent. I mean, superbly written. I doubt if I'd have ever got where I did get to without that. Uh, it, it was so informative and so simply put together. I'd play around with it. You couldn't do much 1K RAM. I remember typing in a maze because it had alphanumeric on the keys. So there was two by two, black and white, picture on each key. And so I remember typing in a maze into the command line. And you could just go across, top line, second line, third line, type in a maze, make it up as I go along. And then I pretty much filled the screen and then it said out of memory. We had to use the extension RAM pack that hung off the back and very precariously off the back. Slightest jog and the thing would crash, you'd lose whatever work you'd done. So I don't know what everybody else did, but I made a board with various lumps of wood on it that taped the RAM pack and the computer to it so that nothing could move. Some of my friends were getting ZX81s and beginning to talk about 16K RAM packs and sticking frozen milk cartons on to keep them cool. The 16K ZX81 RAM pack had a habit of overheating the whole system. So you'd have to get a carton of milk out of the fridge, stick it on top of the ZX81, and uh, hope for the best, really. 